This is the Ferrari 512 BBI. And apart from being extremely beautiful, I want you to focus on that little letter I. That signifies Bosch fuel injection. And this is one of the last of the Berlinetta boxes, the father of the Testarossa. But this 512 BBI is even more special because it is one of only 42 right-hand drive cars. And not only is it the first 512 BB to be delivered into the UK, it was also the Marinello press car and it's featured in all of the road tests and magazine covers of the time. That makes this a very special car. And this week on Drive Every Ferrari, I'm gonna explore it in detail. I'm gonna find out what makes it interesting. I'm gonna look at the differences between this and the carburetted version. I'm gonna look at this car's unique history. And of course, I'm gonna go for a drive so that hopefully I can lay to rest forever, which is the better car, the carburetted or the fuel injected 512. So if that sounds like your special brand of Bosch K Jetronic Vodka, Let's get on with it. This is the 512 BBI, the fuel injected version of the Berlinetta Boxer that replaced the 512 BB in 1981. And it was of course replaced by the Testarossa in 1984. Just look at it, what an absolutely fabulous shape it is. As you can see, it's in Rosso Corsa with cream leather. It's done just 17,000 miles and it started life as the UK Ferrari press car. So that means it was driven by a large number of hairy assed motoring journalists and it featured in all the road tests and magazine front covers of the time. Just like these, in fact. That means it's historic, famous, and now it's mine for the day. You may have already seen the Drive Every Ferrari episode on the carburetted 512 BB, but this week I wanted to compare that with the car that replaced it, the fuel injected version, and also discover which 512 is therefore better, carburetor or fuel injection, the earlier car or the last one. Ferrari made 1,007 BBIs and just 42 in right-hand drive, just like this car and it was never available in the United States of America, which restricted its sales potential, something that was fixed for the Testarossa. So let's have a walk around this magnificent car. Let's take in all the details, and I'll point out exactly how you can tell a BBI from the BB. Today, this car looks greater than it ever has done. It might be a slice of the 70s. It's still just as pretty as the 365 and the 512 BB. This is an iconic, Ferrari shape. It is completely beautiful. This is a true Ferrari icon, a work of art. And there are people that just put them in their lounge and look at them. And who could blame them? You've got this wonderful pointy dart-like front, orange lenses over these front lights, pop-up headlights, of course, the coolest thing in the world. You can see the way that this has a grille picked out in silver. And as you look through the grille, you can see those cooling fans there, something that this car very much needs. This Pininfarina design has sculptures everywhere. It's of course another piece of beautiful craftsmanship by Leonardo Fioravanti. The longer you look at it, the more you just drink in the details. That fabulous pronounced rear wheel arch. It might sit quite high above the tires, a little bit too high in my opinion, but there's a terrific bulge in it, just like you get in a 328 in later years. That midpoint line that extends right from the front all the way through the middle of the car and out the back, just separating it, which of course many cars feature in a two-tone design. This car was the first UK delivered 512 BBI, and as such, it is a rare collector's item. It is completely unique. At some point, possibly by Marinello Concessionaires, they added this aerial, which I think spoils the lines a little bit. This car also features factory fitted electric wing mirrors, and you've got that iconic black satin wing that sits just away from the roof, 
can see there, you can put the hand right the way through it. And at the back, we've of course got those crazy slats that the BB had as well. In this case, you've got two sets of black ones, then you've got these black cowlings and the rest is in Rosso Corsa. At the back, just like the BB, we've got quad tailpipes and quad lights. No real change there, except that the bottom bumper looks a little bit different again to the BB. There's a little vent here at the back, just behind the door, which not many people notice. Always love that little detail. Now, there aren't actually that many ways of telling between a 512 BB and a BBI. The most obvious one being the badge at the back, well, duh. But actually the most obvious way to determine the difference is by the egg crate grille here on the front. In the BB, this extends all the way to the outer edge, but in the BBI, it stops short and the headlight actually sits proud so you can see it away from the grill. Also, you've got these lights here integrated in the bumpers. You still get these fabulous Rudge knockoff wheels, which hide ventilated disc brakes, independent wishbone suspension, coil springs and hydraulic shock absorbers. And just in case you wanted to see exactly how much space you've got in the front of a 512 BB or BBI, as you can see, not a lot. That's why you've got so much space behind the seats. The engine cover release lever is here just behind the driver's seat. Pull that, then you have to reach through. And it's actually quite difficult to get to because of this wing, but you basically push this down like that this catch then flicks up and that's just a case of lifting and pulling back this immense rear clamshell and just look at how impressive this is the 512 bbi features the same legendary ferrari aluminium 4.9 liter flat 12 boxer engine naturally aspirated of course and in i form this gets the code name f110 yet twin overhead camshafts dry sump with hydraulically operated clutch and Bosch K Jetronic fuel injection. This one's been recently serviced by renowned Ferrari specialist Bob Houghton and the 512 BBI can get 0 to 60 in 5.4 seconds. You get 335 brake horsepower, 174 miles an hour top speed, that's 280 kph and it weighs 1499 kilograms. It's a 4943cc flat 12, naturally aspirated, with peak torque of 332 pounds feet, which is 451 newton meters. As you can see, this one is spotless. It is absolutely beautiful. What an engine, it's an absolute privilege just to look at it. But now let's have a look inside the car and I'll show you all those quirky features. Well, here we are inside the 512 I and the first thing you notice immediately is that unlike the 512 BB that I looked at, this one has a factory fitted cassette and radio player right in the center and also quite the most astonishingly super cool five band graphic equalizer located right here to the right of the steering wheel. It's an epic slice of pioneer 80s nestled amongst the 70s design. Now this is of course a right hand drive model, one of only 42 in the world. How rare is that? The BBI got a black steering wheel. If you remember, the previous one was silver. But apart from the fact that you've got an eye badge here on the dashboard, everything else is very similar to the previous car. I don't really remember a warning light here in the front of the dashboard indicating whether you've closed the rear deck lid or not. That seems new, but everything else pretty much the same. We've got the same plastic switches and handbrake. Uh, still a bizarre smorgasbord of fantastic tactile shapes. You don't get stuff like this these days. It's all touch screens and heptic feedback type buttons. But this, this is when Ferrari switch gear was at its zenith. What an incredible selection. It's just such a pleasure to use them. The air conditioning controls are right up here at the head of all of them in this central tunnel. You've also got a fabulous Cavallino Rampante stitched into the tunnel here. Now you've got cream leather throughout and brown carpets, and then you've got black leather over the front and the dashboard. That's to keep reflections down, very sensible. You've also got an actual fabric inserts uh, on these sports seats. Behind me, you've got more storage space for being able to put things. You can actually put storage, special custom luggage in the back there, because you don't get much more space anywhere else in the car. You've got the same trays at the back here, just below the window that looks out over those louvres and is one of the best seats in the house. 
Above me in the roof, we've got a similar little reading light like you get in the Testarossa, which I thought originally was some kind of air conditioning tube like you get in aircraft, but I was corrected quite rightly uh, that it is in fact a reading light. The rear view mirror here is in black, which I think is a small change for this model. And one of the other quirky features of the interior is that these sun visors are actually poppered to the roof. Oh, I see you pull them down to use them and then you have to push them back up. And as you do push them, you suddenly realize just how thin the steel on this roof really is. Now, like all the cars in the period, it is a dogleg gearbox, which uh, because it's a dry sump engine takes an age to warm up and to get really good to use, but it is very precise. As you can see, this one is cantered over towards me as a driver. On the left-hand drive models, it's no doubt a lot closer and nicer to use. We do still, of course, have these incredible ashtrays right here in the sills of the car, perfectly positioned for a bit of long distance smoking. And ahead of me through this three spoke steering wheel, I still have those fantastic, extremely large dials. Over here, we've got fuel and battery condition. Just below the steering wheel, we've got the rotating controls for the pop-up headlights. You've also got indicators here and the windscreen washer here. Everything is where I want it to be. Everything is stylish. Everything is very period Ferrari. Overall, the BBI feels just that little bit better screwed together. And do you want to know how to get out of a 512 BB or BBI? Well, the door control to let you out, the lever, is actually located under here. It's underneath the skin of the door. You feel a little metal clasp and you pull that down and the door opens. Don't do what I did with the 512 BB and get locked in for half an hour. So there you go, that is the interior of the 512 BBI. I guess now what we really need to do is take it out for a drive. Here we go then, conventional key start. Turn on the ignition. So the lights come on. Let's get this started, shall we? Oh. It's got a big noise, actually. It's got a big noise. Oh, listen to it already. Seating position perfect, just like the BB. My head is very close to the top of the roof though, so uh, unless you can get some serious adjustment, tall people need not apply. Lots of glass, visibility is excellent, doesn't feel wide at all, it's easy to place. Ah, oh, what a beautiful day. Listen to that, listen to that beautiful flat 12, 4.9 litres. I cannot tell you what a privilege it is to be able to drive cars like this. Huge thanks to its owner, Clive, who is about as big a petrol head as it gets. This is such a historic car. The first ever right-hand drive example. Chassis number one of the series for this car. And it's famous because it's been all over the magazines of the time. I mean, wow, 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 what a privilege to drive. I am driving the Ferrari press car for the 512 BBI. This is history. This, this is history. Many of my heroes from Car Magazine have probably sat in this very seat. A lot of the people that I read growing up, and I've actually got the back issue of Car Magazine that this car was first featured in. I mean, it's history, isn't it? It's literally history. It's such a rare car though, 42. When you consider that modern limited editions, people get excited because there's 499. And even stuff like the SA Aperta, there was only 80 odd of those. 42, 42. It's about as rare as you can get before you get into proper early 50s Ferraris. Now it's a little bit cold this car, so um, hence why the gears are a little bit difficult to use, but that will, that will warm up, they'll get more pleasurable. 
Oh, okay, so first impressions, if I can compose myself. Driving position, perfect. It's very comfortable. These seats are absolutely lovely. Suspension is a little bit hard and steering probably not quite as sharp as the carburetted version that I drove. Wouldn't you just love to hustle one of these around the Alps? Oh, what a dream that would be. I've sort of adopted in this car, you can see my legs are splayed apart, and uh, but I'm quite close to the steering wheel. I'm conscious I want to press the clutch all the way down because that's how you get the best changes in this car. But it does mean you do a bit of mansplaying in this car by driving it. My arms are quite relaxed, but my legs, yeah, doing the hokey cokey down there. Brakes, mm, not too bad, not too bad. I'd say probably the brakes are one of the Achilles heels of the 512, so they really do need a bit more, a bit more pedal feel and a lot more actual stomping power. Just look at the thing, look at the thing. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a searing Rosso Corsa arrow piercing through the countryside. Now from where I'm sitting, there does not seem to be much of a difference between the carburetted and fuel injected car. Everyone says, oh, the fuel injected one is slow, much slower, more cumbersome. It just isn't. There's no real difference. There's a slight mutedness of the engine compared to the carburetted one, but not so you'd notice. I mean, listen to it. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's the very definition of the word glorious. Can you tell I'm having fun? I mean, come on. I know there are lots of highlights in Drive Every Ferrari, but the 512s have got to be right up there, honestly. Yeah, I mean, the steering wheel is giving me all the feedback I need. It's quite weighty. There's a little tiny dead spot in the centre, but I can tell everything that's going on on the road. Oh, and the changes, of course. Classic Ferrari, just wonderful. I can feel they're starting to, it's starting to get a lot easier to change the gears now, so the car is warming up. Behind me, I can see those wonderful louvres. I'm just not sure if there's any other Ferrari right now that just looks as perfect from the outside as this. Uh, oh, 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 come on! So good, so good. Oh, look at these twisty bits. If I can avoid this very, very scary looking tractor, f me. God, oh, dear. Everything is roaring and fizzing and popping. It's just such an organic sounding engine. And then as you apply the throttle, it all takes on a harder edge. Everything starts to sing together. Oh, do you fancy some beans then? Here we go. Second gear, beans, fuel injected, 512 BBI. thing what a thing immediate response oh a cacophony of noise and quite a decent shove in the back I don't think you can really feel any difference between the carburetted and fuel injected cars I don't think you can discern any real difference in performance I think it just depends whether you want to have very slight cosmetic differences or whether you just want the newest car they're both utterly fantastic 
if your aspirations for a Ferrari, an early Ferrari, end at the Testarossa, I would seriously urge you to try one of these. It will blow your mind. Here we go, let's have some more. Got no one behind us. There we go. Ready? Here we go then. Oh! Listen, listen, listen to it. Oh my goodness, it's so good. Oh. Thank you for watching this episode on the 512 BBI. I hope you enjoy it. Please watch it back to back with the 512 BB. Let me know what you think of the car. If you like what we're doing on the car, guys, please subscribe, leave comments and likes. There'll be another episode next week.